So basically, uh, broadly we can differentiate whether the bite is poisonous or non-poisonous based on certain features. Like usually a poisonous snake is a bright color, but non-poisonous snakes can also mimic this feature. Some of them are quite bright in appearance. A poisonous snake usually has a single bite, whereas non-poisonous snakes use to repeated bite marks. And poisonous snakes will have local reactions, but again that is not a confirmatory because sometimes non-poisonous snakes will also have local reactions. What is more important is in the case of poisonous snake, especially of hemotoxin type, the local reaction will eventually spread further, whereas the non-poisonous it will even confined to the local area. So we show about the uh, bite marks. As we can see, the bite marks of a poisonous snake will will definitely have two of the they know what, these are all modified salivary glands located at the roof of this snake and uh, these are the ones that have the pump action to release the poison other tip marks may not be that prominent whereas in case of a non-poisonous snake the tip marks are more prominent without any apparent flank marks now to differentiate the marks of different species of poisonous snakes as we can see cobra the difference between cobra and king cobra is the space of the flank marks if you see the space of the king cobra is much more as compared to the cobra. Other features are almost the same. To differentiate this cobra from viper, we can see two distinct marks on both sides. Whereas the snake snakes, like the cobra snakes, not that common in India, they have indistinct teeth marks with two distinct tank marks. Cobra and crate, again, speaking from appearance point of view, doesn't have much difference in their tank marks. But their clinical features are markedly different, we will see to that. non venomous snakes, as we have already seen, the tank marks are not that prominent, the teeth marks are more prominent. Now coming to some epidemiological aspects, there are around 200 species of snakes in India. However, fortunately only 52 of them are poisonous in nature. And among those 52 species, 50% bites of poisonous snakes are usually dry bites. Dry bite means whether the venom has not been injected or it is injected in insufficient quantity to cause significant clinical manifestations. But still, there are around uh, 2 lakh cases of snake bite each year and uh, unfortunately over 2000 deaths do occur. Now, how to identify the snake in, uh, on the basis of the appearance? So, first we see the cobra. It can be usually a bicolate or a monocolate. Sometimes we do have a monocolate appearance also. Basically dark in color as we have already seen. Now if you compare this cobra with the Russell Bender, we can see spotting taking place without any such monocolate or monocolate appearance. Common trait, one of the deadly species are commonly found in this part of the country. There will be clear cut types. This is one telltale sign for the common trait to identify. And uh, even this patient, though 13 years of old, uh, he was able to at least recall that the snake was dark in color, black or brown, and he did have stripes, prompting us to think of uh, common trait. And finally, the short tail viper, as we can see, the lining underneath resembles that of a sawtooth cutting, and hence it has derived its name. Now, cobra basically comprises of Hana toxin which is a post-synaptic toxin. The significance of post-synaptic synaptic toxin will be discussed in detail and also it is uh, claimed to have cardiotoxin. Since X, not that common in India, has evapotoxin. This is a pre-synaptic toxin. And great has alpha toxin. Now, just to summarize the manifestations, uh, local pain and tissue damage is maximum in case of a cobra and russell viper bite. Not that in common in case of Bite, but it do take this. Once again, neurological manifestations can take this in most of the poisonous bites. And the peculiarity is this Russell viper, though it is predominantly a hematotoxic in nature, it do so in neurological manifestations. So it can confuse the clinicians initially. Now, hematostatic abnormalities, as we can see, it is the great and the Russell vipers where there is marked hematoxic abnormalities. Renal complications are notoriously seen only in Russell viper bites. It can happen in any of the poisonous snakes, but Russell viper bite is specifically known to have that. It's 
response to new statement, once again a peculiar feature. Though Craig and Russell Viper do have neurological manifestations, they do not respond to neural stigmine, probably because their poison is of pre-synaptic in nature. Whereas Cobra has a post-synaptic type of poison and it does respond to neural stigmine. Response to anti snake venom is seen in all the four species because the Indian ASV comprises of venoms comprising of all the four poisons. Now the features of hematotoxic or neurotoxin type. So there will be hemor the hemorrhagins, metalloproteins, lecithinase, DNAs, and etc. Are the these are basically proteolytic enzymes that are found in hematotoxins. Whereas alpha toxin and cobra toxins are the principal components of neurotoxin. <coughs> so in pre-synaptic type of neurotoxins, it basically blocks the release of neurotransmitters <coughs> at the level of nerve muscle junction. Whereas post-synaptic types, uh, it binds to the ACH receptors at the motor end plate. In hemonotoxic, it's basically the proteolytic action that increases the capillary permeability. That explains the edema, necrosis, blisters and all. And also there is a um, assay of pro-coagulant enzyme activation that leads to consumption coagulopathy. This explains the deranged uh, clotting profiles and the uh, chance of developing DIC. Now initial management uh, was given by the synonym of right. 